All right. So good afternoon. My name is Alex Gonzalez. I'm the Adobe specialist here at the University of Arizona. Um, and today we're going to talk about using CC Express. And it used to be called Spark, Spark Post, Spark Page, and Spark Video. Excuse me. <laughs> um, not a lot has changed beyond a name change. Features have been added. Things have not been taken away. Uh, how's everybody feeling today? Has anybody here used Spark in the past or Express at all? Um, you can answer in the chat or give me a thumbs up. Cool. Some hearts. Love it. Seems like most of us have been exposed to it. Never used, and that's okay. You're going to see that uh, Express is the lowest learning curve I would say of all Adobe products, and it's it's designed that way on purpose. It lets you create satisfying graphics that you, you'll feel good with what you made um, without needing to open up, uh, without needing to open up Illustrator, Photoshop, or any of those programs. Um, and if you just joined, I put a link to our resource page. And I wanna say that during these I'm not gonna. I'm gonna try and take 45 minutes just to show you all around. Um, we'll we'll talk about diving deeper in the second series of workshops. Um, please ask questions whenever you feel like it. Uh, you can unmute or you can put it in the chat. Um, this is not a very strict format. Okay, so let's jump right in. With that uh, that being said, so when you sign into Creative Cloud Express, I'm seeing it called. CCX in writing. Um, I think it's easier to say Express than CCX, so I'm going to keep saying Express. Um, you're greeted with this splash page, and that's one of the changes. You used to see uh, your projects more so, and you used to see the option for what you wanted to jump into. So here, you still have a jumping off point for graphics, um, which is the most common thing people are using Express for. So it says, what are you trying to make? Um, you say, oh, I, I, I want to make an Instagram story or an actual post. I'm making a poster for my class, an inspirational poster, right? It's going to say Monday. So there's going to be a cat hanging from it. Everyone's going to be inspired. Um, and you can keep going through here. You can also create your own templates if there's something that you make regularly with, that has the same format and you just are changing images and text. You can load those up too. Um, underneath that is a new section that they are calling quick actions where you can actually, sorry, got an unexpected chime there. Um, you can do things that you used to need to do in Photoshop. So you can upload an image and ask it to remove the background. You can convert a video to a GIF so that you can reply in, uh, not in Teams with it, but in other programs. Um, you can resize videos if a video is too big for your purpose. Uh, and there's a bunch of other things, reverse video, slow down. Um, there's things that you can do with PDFs and file conversions. And all those things are free unless you see a little crown, a little yellow crown. Um, that means it's a premium feature. Um, and I like for us to know that because when we share this with, with students and community members and everyone, um, I like for them to know that it's something that they can use whether or not they're part of the university. And there's just little bits that aren't free. Underneath there, we'll see popular templates, which will give you a, a taste of what's trending. You can get an idea for styles and colors. And again, you'll see that little crown if it's something that you need a CC license for. So this is our splash page. And what they really want to do is guide you into what you're trying to make. But you don't have to go through all of these. And then there's a, at the very bottom, there's feature help videos, which are really nice. Um, you don't have to use any of this. If you know what you're going to make, you can start with the big plus button on the left-hand side. And we'll see our quick actions again and our common graphics. But basically what you can do with Express is you can make a graphic. You can say custom size or start from a common size. You can make a web page or you can make a video. If we look at the web page that I made for today, it's 
I we used to call them Spark pages, so I guess we just call them Express pages now. Um, they are just top-down websites that have um, some really nice animation to them. They're meant to be really visually striking and engaging, um, and they help you avoid clutter. So you can there's there's not a lot you can do with them as far as customizing goes, but there's a lot you can do as far as purposes go. Um, I use them for asynchronous resources. I use them for um, announcing workshop series, a little information. We use them for portfolios and even for just presentations. It's a, it's a way to flip your traditional presentation. Um, so this web page can, well, we won't jump into it yet. Sorry, <laughs> getting ahead of myself. I always do that. Okay, so uh, for example, today, I wanted to share on our Instagram that everybody has unlimited access to Adobe stock now. And there are Adobe graphics that I could use, or I could open up an Illustrator or Photoshop, but you know, it's, it's not a high stakes announcement. It's a free feature that I want people to know about. So I thought, let's just jump into uh, Express and make a graphic really quick. And all I did was find a template that looked like it was a good layout for me. And then I replaced it with my own images, texts, and colors. And then I added other things like this little free icon was something that I was able to dig up. So the idea here is that you don't have to start from scratch. And what you wanna do is go and remix things that are already there. Um, I think getting started is one of the biggest barriers to creative projects. So you can kind of remove that. Um, especially for something like a class project where you're asking a student to approach the problem with a creative aspect. Sometimes it can be a little intimidating. So these express templates really help you out. So let's let's look at some together for a minute here. All right, wrong tabs. So let's just search for templates. Um, you can see my recent searches, photography, free announcement, product announcement and infographic. So let's say um, you're asking students or you're, you've been asked to create an infographic about some topic that you've learned in class. You don't have to go and create it from scratch. You can go and find these existing ones that are high quality and totally editable. You don't have to keep anything about them, but they'll give you a layout that you don't have to worry about. Uh, let's check out cats. And this is a premium one. So Again, if, you'd, if you're using it free, you wouldn't be able to use this one. All right. So when you click on a template, you'll see this one hasn't been used a lot. 249 times it's been remixed. So that might be something that you use to inform you whether you should use something else. If it says it's been re remixed like 2 million times, maybe it's been used enough and you should find something else. So we'll click Create from this template. And that will take us to our graphic design space. And on our web page, there is a section that will go into detail about everything that I show you. So don't feel like you have to memorize anything. Um, there are resources here for you. Okay, so this space, we will explore it from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, you can choose a different template if you want, and you can search your templates. So if you started from scratch, you could go and find, go and find a template if you wanted to. Um, and you can filter them and break out what you have here. You can find topics. You can tell it I only want premium and uh, common categories. So you don't lose your opportunity to look for templates when you enter the design space is the important message here. Then we have our text button that will actually show you some really popular uh, designy texts. So let's say I don't like this cats. I can delete it, just clicked on it and press delete. And I can find something that has a style that I'm more into. And you can see it's broken into logos, seasonal, headlines, or you can even search. Uh, 
Maybe I'll search scary. Oh, I got one. Okay. And I got this kind of drippy text. Um, so now I have text that I can double click to change different parts of it. And we'll get a little more into it, that when we go to the right hand side. So let's just make this smaller for night for now. Then we have the photos section where you can actually browse Adobe stock here. Maybe I don't want my infographic to be about cats, but I'm feeling a theme coming up here. So I'm, I'm gonna make it about clowns, uh, horror night and clowns. Um, so here you can, I, I hope nobody has a, a, a fear of clowns. Let me know, I'll choose something else. <laughs> uh, I can choose these other images and I believe I can put them in even if they're premium because we have unlimited 2D assets. So I can drop images just by clicking on them. Uh, you can also upload your own. So I can click upload and I can browse my images. Here's a hiking couple and I can drop it in there as well. And while we're talking about images, I'll say that if you want to make it the background, that's where you turn the switch on and it puts it in the background. Um, we can also do a few other things. Let's delete that one. There's too much there, but we will put this clown here. Let's get some more clowns. This, this one's another good one. And I can delete the other cats. Oh boy. All right, and there we go. So then we have icons. So as far as photos go, you can upload your own, you can use stock. Um, and if you, photos also count as like PNGs that you might've designed in an outside program. Um, so I have gone through the splash page and a couple pieces of the design area. Are there any questions so far? Ooh, can you remove the image background? You can. Um, that was something I was gonna show you in a minute, but let's just get there organically. So I choose my image and on the right hand side, I can replace, upload a different image or I can remove background. Um, it's trying for you. And generally it works pretty well if you choose your images wisely. Um, there's one image here that I'm not so sure it will remove the background on very well. Um, and you can also go and clean it up. So one thing I will share off the bat, um, there's some zoom buttons down here. I like to just press command or control plus to zoom in. So <laughs> it, it did a pretty amazing job if, if you ask me. Um, but if I wasn't quite happy with what I did, I have the erase brush that lets me deselect parts of it. I'm gonna command or control Z, I can change the size here. Um, and I have the restore button that lets me add parts of the selection back in, like some of his um, clown suit maybe got deselected and I didn't want that. It's a, it's a free web-based subtraction, so it's not gonna be as polished or as customizable as it might be in Photoshop, but it gets it to the point where most people wouldn't go and say, hey, that edge is a little pixelated. Um, if you're happy with what it did, you can hit the check mark. Um, and you can also invert your cutout. So if I actually wanted the silhouette of my clown, <laughs> I could do that, which is actually a pretty useful tool for creating interesting designs. Okay, check mark. And I'm gonna zoom back out, command or control minus. Let's move this clown over here. Uh, so this is one that I'm not so sure it will do a good job cutting out because it's got a very busy background and colors that overlap. It's really not too bad. So then I could use the restore button and bring back in these little parts that it accidentally cut out. Pretty good. I'm gonna command control minus to zoom that out a little bit. I think he goes there. And here's another thing. Um, if you see my mouse, when I hold spacebar, it turns into the hand tool that lets me cl click and grab my project and drag it around. Um, so that's kind of nice. If you have a laptop, you can 
a trackpad you can scroll around to. But I'm used to Command or Control minus to zoom in and out, Spacebar to pan around, and Command or Control zero to view the whole project. So those are nice little keyboard shortcuts. OK, let's cut this guy out too. Why not? Remove background. We'll take it. Good enough. Good enough for an infographic. And make him a little bigger. Oh my goodness. OK. So the next section is icons. And what I want you to notice is um, Express is a, a little like a streamlined version of Photoshop and Illustrator. But there's no actual drawing tools or brushes. Um, you're only finding assets or design um, artifacts and adding them to your canvas and then manipulating them. Um, so if you want a square, <laughs> you can search for a square. Uh, and then you'll find different ones, like a square with a rounded edge or a dashed line. If I add a square, You'll see on this right hand side, my properties and editing area, I can change the color here. And you can move this bottom rainbow selector around to choose your um, hue, and then you change the saturation of it here. So I could put this here, and I'll show you in a minute um, our layers as well. We'll get there. So here we can find icons. So uh, in the one I made here, I put a mouse pointer there. So that's where I found that. I put, I think I just put pointer. Yeah, so here's some mice. So you can find some nice design elements there. And then there's something called design assets. So icons are going to be flat images. There's my, there's the one I used. I saw it just now. Um, and generally speaking, they should be vectors that can be resized without a loss of quality. Yeah, pretty nice. Not a nice design, but nice that you can make them big. Design assets are images and illustrations that have already been cut out. They already have a background removed, or even they're just meant to be like collage aspects. So you can find assets, you can search trending. Um, for example, there are frames here. I could go to more. And there are different frames. Uh, these are like boho paint. So this is just meant to go on top of your image as these kind of paint strokes. Um, and again, depending on the size of your project, it may or may not fit right. OK. And then we have backgrounds, which any image can be a background, but there's also a collection of really graphic um, and designy backgrounds that you can put in here. And so if we go to this, if I click on the background, let's remove it. Okay, let's get out of there. We'll get there in a second. So you can find backgrounds here too, if you prefer like this pink marble, you can choose to pin it and it'll make it our background or you can make it move freely and it'll just be on there as an image. So we can see there's a background and there's also these random blobs that were part of my template that I don't really want anymore. But I have put a different background in there. Um, when I click on the background, I can replace or remove it. I can rotate it and I can make it bigger or smaller. And it's set to take up the entire canvas. All right, uh, you can build logos out for your, your brand. So for example, I have a Creative Campus logo. Uh, <laughs> I probably don't want it on this info infographic, but you can kind of build your brand out with your colors and your logos in there um, and have them ready to use. Um, this is more a social media purpose of it. But um, you know, it's it's not a bad thing to have. All right, and then you also have your libraries. If you've been using Creative Cloud for a while, um, you can access files that you've been saving to your Creative Cloud libraries. So, um, for example, I can look in my library, and I have Creative or Adobe Stock assets in here that I can put in here, like uh, 
looks like a bunch of cactus. <laughs> Let's try, I don't want to use any of those, but there we have them. So that's the left panel. Now we're going to talk about manipulating our design more beyond just placing things in there. Are there any questions so far? Okay, so the center space I called our canvas, and I already talked about zooming in, zooming out, panning around, and fitting to screen. That's command or control plus, minus, and zero, and space bar to, to pan around. Um, above the centered area, we have our undo button, which is a very good button. You can also use a keyboard shortcut, command or control Z. And over here, we can name our project. You don't have to save, it saves as you're working. Uh, two, three, 22, Express Workshop. Um, I recommend taking the time to name your files because if it's hard to navigate something that is just named unnamed project 54. Um, and you can see it said it was saving and it has saved. Um, as a quick aside, if I open up Express on my phone, I have to close this project first, but I can view the same project on my phone and continue working on it. So sometimes you might be, I don't know, waiting for something and you can start a project on your smartphone and then finish it on your desktop or vice versa. All right, there's the canvas. So when we look here now, um, this is this right-hand panel is a dynamic panel depending on what you've clicked. So when I click on nothing, there's nothing going on. If I click on the background, I have my background options and I have my layers. If I click on the shape, I can change the shape color, I can replace the shape and I can adjust its transparency. Down here in my layers is how I can reorganize my elements. Um, there's not really a right click. Some of us might be used to like PowerPoint, right click, send backwards, move to back, move to front. But you can just click and drag your elements around. And I can see this clown is supposed to be above that shape. Um, so that's how you change the order of things. So Horror Night, this text, should be at the tippy top. Let's talk about making changes to text because it can be a little counterintuitive. When you click on text, well, this, this particular text is actually grouped. If we look at it, there's the text Horror Night and there's the text Enjoy Your Classic Horror Films. So right now my properties are to ungroup it. Or I can double click and select the text Horror Night or the one underneath. So double clicking lets you drill down into groups. If you don't want them grouped, you can click the group and ungroup it. Now they are two separate pieces. If I wanted them grouped, I could click on them and hold shift and group them. Okay, so uh, let's just name this clowns. Like this. And I actually don't want a subtext. I'm just going to click on it and delete it. So now this text, it's a single word and a single line. And I can just resize it by using that bottom anchor. And then if I click on the middle of it, I can move it around. And if I click underneath, I can rotate it. Um, multi line texts. So these are grouped together again. Uh, I'm gonna delete this rectangle. <laughs> so again, I can double click to drill down and I can use this cats or domesticated mammals, uh, just say clowns. There we go. And we'll, we'll leave the rest. But uh, so here, this text, the line spacing is determined by the size of the box, which I can change with this little vertical handle. It's got the two vertical lines. Uh, it will also respond if I resize it like this, but it also changes the size of the text at the same time. So something to be aware of is multi-line text 
change the number of lines by giving it more space and change the size by changing the size of the box. Um, you can also go in here and just say, I want size 30. And then you can choose your fonts here. Oh, that's really hard to read. Um, let's use Proxima. That's the U of A official font. So I'll make it take up this space a little better. Um, I also want you to notice that you can add fonts here. So when you click on your font, you can click add fonts and go to your Adobe font book and find more. You can stylize these fonts. I don't want to do it for some copy like this. Uh, this is more, this is font that should just be a, a nice sans serif like that. Let's just go ahead and delete this one. But let's play with this um, 373 million. I'm gonna ungroup them. Because you can also, just like we explore templates, you can also have Express um, recommend different styles. And those different styles will use shapes, shadows, um, different alignments, different uh, curvature and grid alignments um, and secondary styles, but it'll just put random ones together for you. So I'll click on the text and I'll hit this magic wand in the bottom right. And as you click through that, you'll see it finds colors in your design and it starts to give you different combinations of them. So that's a nice way when you're not really sure how you want to design, you can go through and get something that might fit your needs better. Um, those don't always read very easily. All right, so let's say, I don't like that. Right now, what it's doing is applying the capitalize and fit. If I like the color and the font and the boldness, but I want it to be a normal text, I just have to choose one of the regular alignment options. So you're not stuck with the magic that happens, um, just for, so you know. And you can also say, I want to add a highlight style. If you can see where my mouse is, that lets you choose a part of this text and apply different styles, colors, um, and shapes to them. So here, 373 had its font changed, its color changed, and it was given a shape here under effects. Pretty good. And let's look at the word clowns. And let's look at shapes a little more. Uh, I just want you to see that your shapes include other shapes. So a banner is a really popular thing that people use right now. So I could put this banner on here and it changed my font color. I don't like that. There we go. So I could center this and start to redesign my layout a little bit here. Are there any questions so far? There's nothing, I don't have a coherent message here about clowns. <laughs> um, so I hope that's not confusing. But this is basically how you could ask somebody to take a piece of information and turn it into something that's, that's a visual narrative instead to challenge them to cre cre uh, think creatively. Um, the final thing that you can do with these, not the final, but something else is your images can also be uh, have filters applied to them. So you can explore your filters and add some consistency in your color and design. So if I didn't want them to, if I wanted them all to just be black and white, I could go and do that, but I don't think that makes sense. That is making graphics with Express kind of in a nutshell. It really is something that if you just get in and start playing, you'll see that everything you're trying to do, you'll have to click somewhere. Um, and to change your text, you just double click and type something else and then just click back out of it. Are there any questions about the graphic space? The next thing I'll show you is how to share them out and also how to choose different sizes. Okay, wonderful. If they come up, ask them when you feel like it. Also, this clown's banner is white and really hard to see. So I could 
go back to clowns, go back to shape and say, ooh, that should be, that's kind of, I don't know. You can spend a lot of time trying to find the right color for things, but that's what I chose right there. So let's say this is almost ready, but I actually, this is too tall and skinny. I want this to be a, a story that can be shared on Instagram. And um, so I need to resize it. So if I click again on my design and I just close this panel, I can find, hey, where'd it go? Is this one not going to let me resize? Hmm. Oh, it's right here. I'm blind, sorry. It used to be at the top. <laughs> so if you just click off, you have the resize function, which is apparently a premium feature. You click that and you can say, I want an Instagram story. And it doesn't just mm -hmm. shrink it, shrink your canvas and then just cut off whatever's not in there it will try to rearrange your design to fit that space. So I could turn it into landscape. It didn't do a good job with that. Uh, let's go back to Instagram story and I could make it a square and you'll see it tries to keep everything in there, but in a way that hopefully makes a little bit of sense. So I'd still have some work to do here. I can make things bigger, but it wouldn't take too long. Make this clown really big. Perfect. Um, and there's also in that resize menu is the custom size where you can choose very specific. Oh, good. Good question. How do I see the layers? So if you have nothing selected, you don't see your layers. You just see the colors, animation, background, all that good stuff. If you just click on any part of your design, our layers will show up here. And to Rearrange them, you just click and drag. That's my background, so I can't rearrange that. Um, and you can also, where did it go? Here we go, layer order. You'll see this little pop-up that comes up when you choose a layer that lets you do some quick actions like delete it change where it is if you don't want to click and drag and also duplicate it. If there's something that, like if you set up some text that you know you're going to use the same style over and over again, you can duplicate and then just edit the text. Andrew, may I ask a quick question? Of course. I'm not seeing this up here. How do you get that to pop up? So if, if I click on this empty space here, it's not going to be there. But if oh, I click on part of my design, like the word clowns, all of my layers will show up. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. Um, so duplicating is a nice feature. Yes, so Jillian asked, uh, as long as we're logged in with our U of A web auth, um, actually, that's not true. As long as you have requested a U of A Creative Cloud license and you are signed in through web auth, you will have full access to all the features, everything that has a little gold crown. So if you don't have an active license, I imagine everybody here does, uh, you just go to adobe.arizona.edu. Okay, so let's say we're ready to share this out. Uh, I'm really proud of what I've made here today. <laughs> I'm not, uh, and I want to share it in some way. The quickest route is just to click download and I can choose a PNG a JPEG or a PDF. Um, PNG, some people call them ping, uh, is a good choice for things that have a lot of graphic and vector elements uh, because it is basically a compressionless save. Um, JPEG is probably the, the safest choice here, in my opinion. Um, it's, it's made for pixel pixel based images. And PDF is something that's probably, I would use if I was doing almost all text, but I would probably almost never use it. So if I choose JPEG and download, we'll see it downloaded here. And here is my finished work of art that I can go back and edit anytime as well. There's also to the left of the download button, this collaborator button. And I can invite somebody to come have a look and to go make their own edits as well. The only caveat here is that only one person can be on it at a time. Um, and I actually don't know what this light bulb is. 
Oh, it's tutorials. <laughs> uh, and then there's the share button, which gives you a few more choices. Uh, you can actually publish it. So you can get the choice to just get a link. And this link, if I copy and put this in the chat, you will all have the, the joy of viewing this finished image as a web link. So that's a really easy way if somebody is trying to complete an assignment and you want to avoid any uploads or downloads whatsoever, you can just say, oh, publish a link and turn that in. Um, it's a quick way to share. Uh, that link can also be used with embed codes if um, where, wherever you're putting it supports it. Uh, and then you can do these other options that they're fun. <laughs> okay, that is graphics with Express. Um, the other two I'm just going to show you around in the next 10 minutes, and then we'll have time for questions or to uh, be on with our day. So any questions at this point? There were some very good ones. I, I'm, I'm happy to hear questions. Oh, there was one more thing, I apologize. Let's say I'm gonna make a lot of clown templates, a lot of clown infographics. This is where I can turn it into a template. That way I can regularly access this design. Um, and the reason you want a template instead of just going and editing the one you made is when you open a template, it creates a new one with that and it doesn't affect your original, which is a very useful thing. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to projects here. We'll see, I have, I didn't follow my own advice. I'm gonna rename this one. Do our students have access to Adobe Express so they can play with the template features? Yes, everything I've shown you, everybody at the U of A who has a license has access to. So that's a really good question. Okay, so here when I go back to projects, you can see my clown poster, my announcement, and my web page. So let's look at web pages really quick. So if we scroll down. Um, these websites really only have three, six, seven ways you can put content to them. You can do an image, straight text, you can add buttons. Buttons are good for making links. You can paste a video if it's from Express, from YouTube, and I think Vimeo, we'll see. You can make a grid of photos. Uh, you can do a glide show, which you'll say, glide show, what's that? That's um, this first thing where a piece of content glides in over an image that zooms in. So that's those are those fun little animations. So these are both glide shows. Um, this is a split I think that's what it's called. This is a simple image with text above it. These are buttons. Here's another split. I think that's what it's called. I think I called it the wrong thing. Yeah, split layout. So that's the um, choice for layout that you have. And you can actually do quite a bit with it. So let's just see this page here. When you start a page in Express, the first thing you have to do is choose your title and your hero image. It always starts with a, a big, beautiful image. Um, so you can replace or choose it here. And then as you design, you'll see these little pluses that let you add your content. And it really is as simple as saying, oh, I want H1 text here. Look at my big text and I want it to be centered and underneath there, I want a photo where you can upload or browse Adobe stock or your own libraries. Uh, let's here. Ooh, that's cute. Let's put that in there. So these web pages, I, I feel like the resource page I shared is your biggest introduction to them. So um, I'm not actually gonna do a full blown demo about them because I really think it's too much content in one day. So I'll just give you a, this glance that we had. Um, and then the final piece is video. Um, has anybody here used Adobe Premiere Rush or Premiere Pro?
Okay, good. If you're using those, I'm going to say, don't bother with Express Video. <laughs> but if you want a quick, easy way to put a slideshow or record yourself with your webcam, um, that's what Express Video is really good for. Let's go ahead and look at that. And one thing I really like about Express Video is that just like the templates for design, it, it helps you, it kind of helps you storyboard as you go. So it says, what's your story? Tell us. And I was demoing Express Video. And then it says, oh, well, what are you doing? Are you promoting an idea? Are you telling a story? Is it show and tell? Are you teaching something? And so forth. So when you pick this, or you can say, I don't want you to give me a storyboard. It basically puts the layout of your video together where you'll have an overview, introduce the concept, give examples, explain them and so forth. Um, so this is something that works really well with images or multiple videos. And then just like the graphic, just like the web page, we can download it or we can share it out as a link. So it's it's a really nice tool um, if you want students to create something without having to install software. And I think if there's demand, I'll have to do a, a separate workshop for doing Express Pages and Express Video, just because it's I don't I, I don't want to crowd our our learning. <laughs> um, so and our schedules more than anything. At this point, this is really everything that I wanted to share. The biggest idea here was looking at the graphic design built into Spark, or I'm sorry, it's gonna be a long time, Express. So are there any questions? And um, I, I do hope this was helpful. Thank you for being here. Stop recording.